Ibadan, Yoruba land's treasure versus Igbo land's finest. With nearly 4 million people, Ibadan is Nigeria's largest city by land area. In fact, no city in Africa is bigger than Ibadan except Cairo. Yoruba people are the only humans on earth who tolerate Islam and Christianity equally. Sometimes you can hardly tell the difference. If only the rest of the world were as religiously tolerant as the Yoruba, the world would have been a better place. Ibadan was the first city in Africa to launch television and it was also home to the first skyscraper, which at the time was the tallest building in Nigeria. Enugu, in contrast, is a city of careful planning. It has departed from the traditional British layout to embrace the quintessential Igbo city design. Major areas feature paved roads adorned with traffic light. The city is endowed with coal that could fuel Nigeria's industrial revolution. Enugu is a city of potential and promise. The city is enveloped with hills, natural vegetation and a balanced climate. It is among the safest cities in Nigeria and has a high literacy level. Despite its meager size, Enugu stood to Ibadan in many ways and even surpassed it in quite a few. Welcome to Ibadan versus Enugu. Ibadan versus Enugu, Yoruba land's finest versus Igbo land's finest. Lagos, by the way, was not built by the Yoruba. It was a collective Nigerian endeavor. Enugu enjoys the British foundation that laid the planning for this remarkable city. Dubbed Coal City, it was founded in 1909. The city has abundant coal reserve that is pretty much still untapped. If properly exploited, the amount of steel extraction and revenue generation that could have been funneled into the Igbo economy would have been tremendous. The city is just 113 square kilometers. It has an international airport with direct flight to Addis Ababa. Its population is just under 1 million, with the lingua franca being Igbo. However, English is a language of business and younger people use it interchangeably with Igbo. The Igbo language is rapidly going extinct as Igbo people are not passing it on to their children. Instead, they teach them the Nigerian version of English, which is by all standards not acceptable English. As with the rest of Nigeria, the gutters are uncovered and littering and urinated in public are part and parcel of daily life in the city. Enugu in the Igbo language means hilltop. It is pronounced as Enugu. The city's captivating endless hilltops are its natural hilly geography. Despite its name, hilltop, the city lies at the foot of an escarpment, not a hill. The city was, and still, is the only Nigerian city to have produced an elected non Igbo male. In 1952, Malam Umaru Altine, a Fulani cattle rarer from Sokoto, became the first elected mayor of Enugu Municipal Council a post he held until 1958. The Igbo people are Republicans and there is some tribal sentiment. Still, the Igbo people are the only ethnic group amongst the top five, Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Ijo and Kanuri, that would vote 
for competence over ethnicity. Enugu, in comparison, has managed to maintain its major road despite the presence of open gutters. However, the lack of pedestrian walkways is a common issue in Nigeria. Like the rest of the country, the city's railway system suffered from mismanagement and neglect, leading to its current dilapidated state. Power supply in urban areas can reach up to eight hours daily, but it becomes less frequent as we leave the central district and head to the rural areas. The absence of public running water is another challenge, with residents resorting to boreholes. The city also lacks a BRT or public transportation system, leaving residents relying on private rideshare vehicles or tricycles. Like many cities in Nigeria, Enugu grapples with urban poverty. While it may not be as visible in the central areas, there are pockets of rundown districts such as the Galiki area. Here, shanty towns and poor structures are home to many northerners. Despite these challenges, Enugu's infrastructure is a cut above the Nigerian average with traffic lights, tarred roads and other passing structures. The government or public schools were an eyesore, nothing to write home. It is just mind-boggling how the government can abandon education. There has got to be something wrong with the brains of those who run Nigeria. Primary schools have no running water, electricity, fans, toilets, computers, laboratories, or recreational playgrounds. Pupils literally played on stones and sand, and there were not enough trained teachers, materials, or security. In short, it was a total mess. I haven't got a clue how anyone can learn anything from there. The public hospital in Enugu, Esu, was functional with some new blocks under construction and three ambulances on standby. There were some bin collectors and street sweepers focused on the central areas. Zebra crossing and non-existent. Most motorists don't go to driving school in Nigeria. Driving licenses are purchased, not earned. What I mean by that is, you walk into the driving license office, give them some money, and they give you a driving license. That is what buying essentially means. As I alluded to earlier, many of the tricycles drivers were northerners. They occupy the Galiki district of Enugu. Enugu also houses many Igbo people from the other four Igbo states and some Igbo people from Delta and Rivers. The city is not what you'd call tourist-centric. There are barely any tourists and almost nothing is designed for tourism. The Igbo system is overly short-term centric. There are scarcely any historical site or architecture. Emphasis is laid on replicating European and North American structures and histories instead of authentic Igbo ones. The place is void of history, character, or identity. Even the Igbo spoken by the youth is a diluted version, a sign typical of language no longer cherished or valued. The literacy level in Enugu is one of the highest in the country. However, intelligence hinges on how well one speaks English rather than learning academic skills. The importance attached to English is slowly pushing the Igbo language to a secondary status. This is quite huge because 30 years ago, it would have been nearly impossible to find people born and raised in Enugu who could not speak Igbo fluently. However, today, many Gen Z and under 12 year old are just receptive bilingualists. They understand basic Igbo, but can't speak it. Instead, they use English as their first language, even though the English spoken is a corruption of the local tongues. Enugu is a relatively safe place. However, I cannot call Enugu a safe place per se when it lacks standard police or security apparatus. 
Petty and violent crimes are widespread, but compared to most cities in Igbo land, Enugu may just come up on top. The people are very sociable and loud, which is typical of Nigerians, and they spend most of their time partying and doing unproductive activities. This is true of Nigeria as a whole. Jobs hardly come by, and private schools are pricey, whilst public schools are in complete disarray, as alluded to earlier. So, young people have no jobs, no school to go to, and no recreational activities. They spend their time on social media and engaging in other unproductive activities. Girls are groomed to be wives and submissive to men, whilst men are groomed to be dominant and make money, regardless how you make that money. You're not judged, but encouraged. Galiki district is the gate of Enugu. Our staff was ganged by idle men who refused to let them leave until they gave them money. Most of them were northerners. Fortunately, the staff member could speak some Hausa. We paid them 5,000 naira before our team member was released. This thuggery and violent lifestyle are prevalent throughout Nigerian cities. We also visited a police station in the city. The DSP, Deputy Superintendent of Police, revealed some disturbing realities. We weren't released the name of the police station or the name of the officer for his safety and his job. The officer claimed that there were no stationery, running water, toilet or police vehicles to patrol or effect arrest. And 99% of the furniture in his office was bought by him. Nigeria is severely mismanaged. How then would you expect such an officer not to be susceptible to bribery? We also visited the old artisan market. Here we conducted the Vox Pop exercise asking the locals to tell us three things about their culture. To see more on our Vox Pops and other content, please visit our main channel at Bantu page. We also visited a coal mining facility, but we were not allowed in. We were told we needed authorization from the Federal Ministry of Mining. Emene is another rundown district of the city covered in rundown looking structures. Here again, we did find beggars. However, all the beggars we saw in Enugu were northerners, not the indigents, Igbo. Enugu's infrastructure with its traffic light over 70% tarred road and demarcated street starkly contrasts the less structured and planned Ibadan. While Enugu's central area showed little visible poverty, Ibadan's suffered more visible poverty, shanty towns and poor structures. As the greatest Yoruba-built city, Ibadan boasts some history that Enugu lacks. The federal government built railway system already gives it an edge over Enugu. Ibadan is a whopping 3.6 million people over three times Enugu's 950,000. No city in Africa is bigger than Ibadan except Cairo, Egypt. Ibadan is 3,000 80 square kilometers, almost three times the size of Lagos and 28 times bigger than Enugu. Yes, you heard correctly. However, its size isn't commensurate with its infrastructural development. At the time of Nigeria's independence in 1960, Ibadan was the most populated city in Nigeria and the second in Africa behind once again. Cairo, Egypt. It is the heartland of Yoruba land, not Lagos. Every second person in Lagos is not Yoruba, but every seventh in Ibadan is Yoruba. It would seem like Ibadan's good days are gone. The great Awolowo would be watching in disbelief. In October 1959, Ibadan spearheaded launching the first television in Africa. 
Its university, the University of Ibadan, was the first in Nigeria. It is also home to the first teaching university hospital, the first sports stadium, and the first to produce a football club in Nigeria. The city was an example of how Yoruba could have advanced if they had their own country to themselves. The Yoruba people are academics who excel in countless fields worldwide. Their land is geographically ideal for building a rising nation. What happened? The Yoruba lost touch when they shifted the fight for a great Yoruba nation to the fight for the great Nigerian ethnic group. Nigerians are busy fighting what ethnicity does better, who is better, who is this, who is that. So the Yoruba lost touch when they shifted that focus. The roads in Ibadan were tarred in limited areas, had potholes and very few traffic lights functioned. The city was filled with litter, open gutters and stuff so badly that it projected a disturbing stench. As usual, every angle of the city was packed with beggars, mainly northerners again. The power supply was erratic like the rest of Nigeria. A BRT bus system covers some areas, but most of the transportation system consists of private ride share, from buses to saloons and tricycles. As usual, running water doesn't exist in Nigeria, so I should stop commenting on this. Most Nigerian homes have boreholes, basically deep wells and overhead tanks where water is extracted and supplied into their houses. Nigerians don't even know what water bills are for since everyone gets their water supply from a dark borehole. The infrastructure in the Ibadan looks like something a five-year-old would draw. Pedestrians, emergency, sewage, bridges, pedestrian crossing and all the other crucial necessities that go with planning a city were overlooked. Job opportunities were rare with beggars storming most major areas. A visit to the IMG Mokola school was an eyesore. Shocking. The school has been vandalized. The local police claimed that Hausa Northerners vandalized it. Again, our staff was arrested for filming the school. Nigerians don't like being filmed. They have superstitious beliefs in witchcraft and all kinds of fictional beliefs that you could use their pictures to block their chances of becoming successful. The school looked like a dustbin. I am not making this up. Classrooms with no roof or desk and scattered with litter, with junkies sleeping on the dirty classroom floor. The only block with roofing was donated by Prince Olaide Akinremi. We also visited Adetoye Teaching Hospital, which had only a single ambulance. The structure was okay, but not great. Ibadan lacks a proper sewage system. Leftovers from the rain and other blocked substances from the sewer pop up and form islands on many roads. There is also a tax force called Ametokun, which enforces no littering and other civil duties. Like the rest of Nigeria, lower abidance is not part of their culture and etiquette. We also visited Mopo Hall, a colonial style structure at the top of Mapo Hill, a cultural center and cocoa house completed in 1964 at 105 meters tall. Cocoa House was the first skyscraper in West Africa and the tallest building in Nigeria between 1965 and 1979. Ibadan had some sense of preservation of history, something not common in Enugu. Ibadan may be bigger than Enugu, but most of its land area is very underdeveloped and filled with shanty towns as soon as you leave the central and major areas. The city still qualifies, in my opinion, as a mega city. Enugu doesn't. Literacy in the city is just as high as in Enugu. Enugu boasts six universities despite being several times smaller, whilst Ibadan has seven. Enugu is cleaner and has better planning and structures, but Ibadan is huge with a distribution of its structures hardly noticeable given its size. Ibadan has a high-speed rail line to Lagos, while Enugu has none. 
Ibadan again has BRT buses, while Enugu's have collapsed due to mismanagement. Ibadan's skyline looks richer from far away, but old and dilapidated from close, whilst Enugu's looks more organized. Enugu boasts nicer individual homes on average than Ibadan. In terms of security, Enugu stands out. The University of Ibadan is far better than Enugu's leading tertiary institution, the University of Science and Technology, ESUD. Ibadan has a bigger economy in terms of total gross product, GDP, but Enugu has a higher GDP per capita. There are 41 publicly recognized hospitals and medical centers in Enugu against 59 for Ibadan. Ibadan and Oyo State produce more crops than Enugu State. Both cities are landlocked. Property prices in Enugu are cheaper than in Ibadan. For example, the average for three bedroom per year in Enugu is 500,000 Naira compared to 1 million in Ibadan. The average price for a duplex in Enugu is 100 million Naira compared to 140 million for Ibadan. Safety, cleanliness, pedestrian safety, affordability, infrastructure, climate and planning go to Enugu while location, shopping, people, nightlife, size, sightseeing, tolerance and tourism go to Ibadan. Remember to subscribe to see more comparisons between our Nigerian cities and other African ones. Also, if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.